Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems something something. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Citadel Contrast Talisar Blue to get a really nice light blue that I think works great for Davion's classic scheme of the Brigade of Guards. For brushes, I'll be using a synthetic makeup brush for most of the dry brushing, a number three synthetic for applying the contrast, a fairly small number two dry brush for detail dry brushing, the majority of the detail will be done with a zero synthetic, and a double zero is what I'll use for the stripes. For paints, I'll be using Citadel Contrast Talisar Blue. In addition to that, I'll be using a white, black, stonewall gray from Viejo, heavy charcoal, model color red, and Pro Acryl Sky Blue. You don't have to use these exact paints, but something similar will get you a nice result. I've primed this Battlemaster in a light gray. You could use white or ivory if you wish. You want a light color to help bring out the blue. I've also done a little bit of undershading. I was experimenting with that. It's not necessary for this paint job to work the way you want it to. It was just something I wanted to try and it really didn't do quite what I wanted to yet, so don't worry about it. I have agitators in all my contrast paints, so when I shake them up really well, it really mixes all that medium inside. Using that number three synthetic brush, I'm starting at the top and working my way down. Fairly heavily loaded on the paint as I'm going to want to move it around and work it into all the crevices and cracks. The paint has a tendency to want to kind of pull away from some areas depending on their shape. So you really just need to look over it a few times to make sure you haven't missed a couple of spots here and there. It's not that you can't touch it up, but it'll look better if you don't have to touch it up later. Take your time with this. It's not anything you need to be rushed with, but try to keep the progression going so that nothing has a edge drying anywhere so that you don't get any sort of lines or anything like that. So I just continue to kind of work around. You'll see me rotate the model. I'll work in a torso and then I'll go up to an arm area and push that area a little further and then rotate the model if you understand what I'm trying to explain there. Coat the model entirely and then watch for any areas that may be pooling. You can see I've got a paper towel there just in case I get a little too heavy on some areas. You really want to look for those big flat spots as well as any overhangs or kind of recessed areas where it would almost be like a small area where something would pool regardless of whether or not it was contrast paint. And then I'll just wick it away using the brush, dab it on the paper towel, or I'll just move it onto another part of the model if I still have an area left to paint. Once you're completely done with the model, Look over it from both the top and the bottom side. Try to use as much light as you can so you can see and let the model dry for at least an hour. I usually tend to wait at least two. Once your model's completely dry, grab that Pro Acryl Sky Blue as well as a dry brush that you want to use. I'm using a round eye makeup synthetic brush. It's fairly soft. I'm not gonna put too much paint on the brush because I don't want it to get pulled up into the center part of the brush and be hidden there because if I start to get a little bit more aggressive as I dry brush, it might actually find some wet paint and I don't want wet paint when I'm dry brushing. If it happens, that's fine. You can try to work it off of the model, but I also try to be fairly aggressive initially in the dry brushing on the paper towel to make sure that I didn't get too much paint in the brush. As you work, just start from the top in a downward motion, trying to catch all those raised edges Working as best you can to keep it kind of perpendicular to those edges, that'll help highlight them more effectively. You just want to catch the raised areas for the most part. You will get some shift of the color, which you want from the top down, and that'll help with the transition, making it look like you've done more work than you actually have as the bottom sides will be more shaded and show a little bit of a shadow due to the darker blue beneath. If you have to go side to side and work even in an upward motion to catch some edges, that's fine. Just try to do the majority of your brushing downward to keep the emphasis on the highest edges. Continue to dry brush the entire model to your liking. If you want to do one layer and see how it looks after it dries, I suggest that. If you want to come back and do the second layer or even change the color slightly, either adding some white or changing to a different color if you're using different paints, that's perfectly fine. I do recommend you let it dry just a little bit so that it mutes out and you can see what the true color is going to be like. Once I'm done with the first coat, I am going to come back and reinforce those highest areas on the shoulders, on the gun, some of the raised panels on the back and the legs. Now that I'm done dry brushing, I'm going to use some heavy charcoal to throw some contrasting details in the joints and weapon barrels. I tend to do this on most of my models. I like the way they stand out and I also like the way it breaks up a monotone 
style paint scheme in this regard. So being this is just mostly blue, I like to have something that's going to stand out even more. You can do this step ahead of time before you do the contrast paint if you're not confident in your ability to get the paint into the areas without messing up some other area or panel that might be difficult to touch up later with the contrast paint. The contrast paint will still tint that paint a little bit more and make that black or gray or whatever look like it might have a little bit of a blue or something like that, but it'll probably be a lot less noticeable than a big black streak on a panel that you have to touch up later on. So if you're wanting to do that ahead of time, that's an option as well. I just tend to work on the areas I want to get done afterwards. And if I make a mistake, I touch it up really quickly with a, another brush and some water to wash away the paint that I've gotten in an area I don't want. As you can see, once it's all finished with the little dark details and recess shading, it really does make the miniature stand out a lot more, make the overall appearance of the miniature look more realistic. With the charcoal areas dried, it's time to do a little bit of highlighting. I'm gonna dry brush with some stonewall gray. You don't have to dry brush it. I'm just showing that you can. If you wanted to do some edge highlights or some blending, because it's not a lot of surface area, this would be a great way to practice and not take up too much of your time working on elements of the model or um, and perhaps some new techniques that you want to work on to improve. Don't be afraid to try things out. You don't have to do the exact same steps I do, but I just wanted to show that you can do a dry brush on this to keep things moving. If you're doing a lot of models and you don't want to spend too much time on each one, this is a way to get a good looking result with a relatively easy process. And since it's such a small amount of area, you don't need to stress over it too much. If you don't like it, you can touch it up again and start over. You can use a different color, so on and so forth. Just do it to your liking. And once you're happy with it, stop. You can see I also took the time to put some base coats onto the base to start the process of working on that. It's something you can do while you're waiting for something else to dry, like the black paint, just to maximize your efficiency and your hobby time. I'm not focusing on any of that process during this video, but I wanted to point it out. What do you think about it, Tex? The coordinator would not approve. With the dry brushing complete, it's time to move on to the real fun part of this particular paint scheme, the stripes. Using off-white and the flow improver that I like to use for my airbrush, I'm going to thin my paints and I'm going to grab my finest detail brush that I have, which is a double zero for Monument. The reason I use flow improver is because I like the properties of it slowing down the drying of the paint not only on the model, but is on my brush as well, so I don't have to clean and re-reload my brush as quickly as I would if it wasn't thinned with the, with the medium. The flow improver also allows me to clean up any mistakes I make much, much easier. And I will make mistakes when I paint these, I always do. But when I have a second brush ready that I've just kept a little bit damp in the paper towel, I can go and work that paint backwards or even take it off completely or almost completely to the point where even if it didn't completely come off, when I get the stripe redone or I add that second color, you won't even know, ever know that I've made the mistake. And that's really the, the trick to a lot of it is just managing your mistakes and minimizing the errors so that you don't have to go back and touch things up. Because the more you touch up, the more potential for mistakes on the follow-up. So the less you spend painting the stripes, the better off you are. Now I am taking my time and I am going to move the model around to try and give myself the best angle to keep things straight. I do stripes quite often and I'm fairly confident in my ability to paint them without necessarily having the model oriented in the most ergonomic direction. And what I mean by that is for the most people, a brush stroke that starts away from you and pulls down towards your chest is going to give you the most straight and accurate control. It doesn't always mean that way for everyone and then of course the angles on the model looking off here and there can complicate things but that's usually a good place for you to start. If that doesn't work for you you can try slightly different angles one way or another left or right handed you know that should fairly be similar but I just wanted to let you know that orientation of the model and your natural brush stroke will definitely help you improve your control it can also be a big hindrance if you're trying to force it one way when maybe you could try a different direction. Going away from me right here is definitely a more of a challenge, but sometimes you just have to get in there and the angles don't allow you to put a brush stroke down the way that you would. 
I probably should have turned the model upside down and done it in that direction, but I don't always do the things that I try to tell others to do. I'm not going to show the entire striping process as it's not the focus of this video, but I did like to throw in some tips here and there for everyone that wants to aspire to paint details better. Moving on to the red, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did with the white. I'm going to thin with a little bit of flow improver that I use for my airbrush. It's Vallejo flow improver. And I'm going to add a little bit of water and get a consistency that I just almost want to have to where it won't run away from me. You don't want it to fall into a recess and start to capillary action taking it away. If you've gotten to that point, it's definitely too far. But at the same time, there's a finer line between too runny and a little too thick because you really don't want it to build up too much texture either. So you definitely have to kind of go back and retouch and re-emphasize the stripes in some areas to get them to show a little brighter. And this will also depend on what color you're painting over. Fortunately, this blue is fairly light and it also kind of shares a bit of the color properties of red, being that purple and blue aren't too far off from each other. But if you're finding you have difficulties getting your red to be bright, you could also just do a wider white stripe between the area that you want to have red and then just paint over that white stripe area that you wanted and then split the line that way. That would definitely give you a much brighter red and it might allow you to paint a wider white line which could be easier for you initially. These are all different techniques that I suggest to people that they try out. You can also use a mechanical pencil to draw a dividing line between the two as a guide. There's a myriad of ways to help yourself out and give you something to aim for, which is really what most of the difficulty comes in, in trying to do this freehand, is that there isn't just an easy guide to say, hey, I just need to follow this panel all the way up. Unfortunately, these new detailed miniatures have a lot of different angles, which is great for their appearance, but definitely complicates patterns like this. Once you're done with the stripes and you've done all the hard work, you're rewarded with a really great looking effect. The red, white, and blue just really, really works well together. It's one of my favorite paint schemes in all of Battletech. And now I've added some decals, jeweled the lasers, done the missile tips, and done some glowing effects on the PPCs. Several of those video techniques will be linked at the end. And here's the finished model with a bit more missile effects added, the base completed, and the cockpit's been jeweled. You can see how well the contrast paints and the dry brushing even though they're basic and simple overall, can be utilized to make a really good looking model. Tex, it's over to you. We certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence, whatever.